She was old and neglected, so we cut her to bear holes and built her up from the ground with our blood, sweat and tears. So follow our journey as we plan to sail her to new destinations and make lasting memories. Last week on Saving Lady Africa, we installed all our lights and USBs and made all the connections, as well as started our electrical panel setup. Monday morning, it looks like I'm um, alone today. I don't know where Moses is, he didn't pitch up. And Simone's at home editing. We've got these frames that I glued on those frames, where the electrical panels are going to be. So. I'm just sat sanding around the edges, cleaning everything up nicely, and then I'm going to route out the interior there. And on that one too, I'm going to route out that inter inside area. So that's what I'm going to do. Pretty much just route out that top. I just drill the pilot hole in there, and then I'll route out that whole interior area. So there's the panels cut out now, the router, and now we can try and fit them, see if the electrical panels fit. So what I've done is I've separated the boat into three different sections. Got the port hull in, in electrical wiring. So the port hull has one system, the saloon has a, sep a second system, and then the starboard hull has a second system. And then there's also a separation between the 12 volts, 220, and then instrumentation. So the instrumentation has its own line, 220 has its own line, and 12 volts has its own line, just so that we don't get interference between them and they're all labeled differently. All our 220 wiring is in thick insulation like this. And I mean, this is much thicker than what you get residential stuff. Although it's a 2.5 mil cable still, uh, the insulation's really, really, really thick on the stuff. Obviously everything is thin coated, thin coat wire. But I just felt like we need as much protection on the 220 that we can, so we insulated that up completely. Then we ran it into really thick and expensive conduit with junction boxes wherever we want to separate or reconnect or anything. But I didn't want it like that. These, these wires run straight from here to the appliance that they go to. There's no breaks in these wires, there's no connections, no joints. I want it to be a solid line from here to there. And the reason for that is I want to be able to turn off each appliance independently directly from the breaker. So the breaker will trip and it will be able to shut down power source to any part of the boat that runs on 220 volts. Not only does it help with efficiency, but I feel that it's going to help with controlling the boat and managing where you want power, where you don't want power. Like while we're sailing, I don't want any of the plugs to be on on the 220. I want only our bridge on it and then the rest must be off. When we maybe get somewhere we've got like more power supply and all of that then we can then we can run the rest of the stuff on. 12 volts are three separate circuits but this is not even all of them there's still another three lines sitting over there. I've run two conduits on either side to run 12 volts only. One conduit is for the whole supply system and one conduit is a separate system just with extra cable in there. I think I've ran Four, four sets in there to the highest gauge that I had, which is a 2.5, just in there for whatever may be used. So if someone wants to add something in 10 years time from now, you'll probably be able to turn this boat into a Christmas tree with all the wire that we've run. Let me know if 600 meters on a 37 foot boat is enough. I've run wires. I've ran wires to the front for the winch. I've ran spare wires to run lights there. I've run spare wires to run a plug there. Yeah, so I've run spare, spare wires for fans, which we don't even have at the moment, but they're already in. Uh, the USBs are on their own circuit. The lighting's on its own circuit. I've run separate wires to add a two, two additional bilge pumps in the front. We have wires in for the aft bilge pumps. Uh, although our bilges are connected, I thought, well, rather put in the wires now for two separate bilge pumps. We ran wires for the sensors. We ran tons of wires in there. And what I did is, I, first I put in all the sprag, then I got the length that I wanted, took the sprag out, measured all the cables, cut the cables to length, fit it in the, in the sprag, and then I ran everything back through again. So in a sense, it's all harnesses that are in the boat. And then in those harnesses, I still ran extra cables. So like the two front USB boxes, they've got an extra set of cables. The off USB boxes, extra set of cables. The saloon has a, two extra sets of cables in there, so we can go mad at the latest stage and add all the extra thingies that we want. On this side, we ran a separate cable that runs directly to the winch that goes directly to the battery supply. 
our battery supply is actually in the aft section and um, our battery supply and our inverter are like literally less than a meter away from each other that's obviously to reduce the voltage loss that we have from from the 12 to 220 and then everything feeds from there to here so every, anything that's high draw goes direct from the battery source to the switches that they are plugged in with the isolators and so forth and then the 12 volts which is gener your general current that we're running for the usbs and all of that that is run directly to the control panel obviously everything's fused i don't know if i'm going to do a double fuse one to fuse the line because there's also a circuit breaker on that and then one fuse at each point i might do that but i can always add the fuse here at a later stage with, which will help me fuse the line and then it'll have a fuse at the point so say you have a usb there'll be a fuse there then i'll have the line fused which will be behind the control box and if that fails then the breaker would would trip each critical system so bulge pumps Navigational equipment, radar, they have their own feed line directly from here and I've over spec the wires just to ensure that they have enough current on them and that we don't have too much voltage drop from the system. But I mean my buzz bars will be here or here and then the instrumentation will all be on the back of this. So I've got less than a meter run from my supply source to them. So that would be fantastic. So I don't have any voltage drop, especially to the autopilot. I don't want a voltage drop to there. The radar uses so little, if I show you guys when we install it, the radar cable is, is like a one mil cable for the power supply, so they've made that stuff so efficient. And that's on the cable that they brought, really, it's 15 meters. We're only using, I think, five meters of that 15 meters that they supplied. All the lights, so all the lights on this boat on at the same time, which is 20 odd lights, draws two amps. Thought that was quite efficient, minus obviously the cable resistance and all of that that you've got to take into consideration. I've tested it out at night and this looks like daylight. And I've separated these lights into different sectors. So obviously, as I said, we've got our port, saloon and starboard. And that's how the lights also are uh, labeled out and marked out. So you can never lose the entire boat. Unless obviously you lose the, the power source, which even the battery, we've got a separate second backup system on there. So there's our supply cable, which is a 2.5. And because this is the aft cabin, it's really small. I'm going to do a shared load. So the 2.5 cable comes in, there's a connection, one of the connections here that's insulated, there's a second connection, then there's two fuses, well those are just fuse holders, but we'll take two fuse holders and the caps are off now. It's connected, I use these, these ones here, so they, that over there, the blue part you see over there is the water seal, so it's waterproof, then there's the solder. They call it low temp solder, but geez, that heat gun gets really hot before these things shrink. They sh these don't, well, this shrinks first before that, that shrinks last. You've got to add quite a bit of heat to get that part to melt, actually. And um, I'll show you how strong they are. They suit, I, I, first I thought it was a gimmick. They are expensive, they're not cheap, but they give you a waterproof connection and it's nicely soldered together. And then that runs up to the, the light. On the outside we've got the USB which looks like that. It's just on a on a blank cover, 2x4 blank cover. And then we've got the little light. Since it's the aft cabin, we don't need much light. It's a 2 watt or 1 watt light. So here's Moses and there's one of the connections that we made. So you can see it's the same type of connectors. The most track them. See if you can break. Track them so let on this. Track, track most. So there's no most. No! No, no. So that's those connections. If you if you don't think they're strong enough, there's Moses pulling everything he can. I reckon I could pull him apart. So let's check. I mean, I'm, I'm slipping a bit, but so yeah, those those connections have really impressed me. So when making a harness, what I do is. I mark them like that. So this will be the only cable in that whole harness link that will be a blue and a red. And then I get them all together. So they're all different colors. Some are blue, some are black, some are red. And then I put them all together and I tape them. And that's what I draw through my harness. So this, these cables here together, that's one harness for one cable sec area. So there's two of these pretty much per side, excluding the, there's no lighting cable here. These are all 2.5. So that would be one harness. I've only got three harnesses through here at the moment, but then that's what the rest of the harnesses come through. 
they come through like that and then they're all also marked underneath there. And then like that I know exactly where this cable goes. So knowing that this, this would be the underbunk water pump. Or I actually just kept this as a spare. But at a later stage I want to install a water pump there, so that's why it's marked like that. After we ran all our electrical and all the connections were made, we had to label the wires to ensure confusion wouldn't occur later on. And of course, we had to test out our sweet lights. Our courtesy lights. That's pretty. So we've got our, some lights going on. Some courtesy lights, some night lights, switches, everything's still pulled out. Some owns. <laughs> Busy my guy wearing a deal to the battery that we got for testing. And uh, so we just got. It's super cool. We can finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can see the light on the ceiling. The light at the end. Good, girly, nice, super nice, looking good. We had these holes where the stanchions were and where the previous stainless steel that goes on the front of the boat. And because we're getting new, just new bow seats, so all the only stainless steel we'll have on the front two small bow, bow seats on the other side. I need to close up these holes. So first put a drill through there, and then I bevel the edge. And I'm gonna clean out the core, and then I'm gonna fill them up with, with epoxy. And then we'll sand them down. And I'm doing that to all the boat, the whole boat. All the fittings are coming off, because when our new stainless steel, that's really minimalistic, it's gonna come back. I want all of this to be done, get some of the deck work finished. Taking off our plates here. We've got holes in there, so what we're going to do is bind it down and uh, fill it up again as we will not be replacing them. So we don't need them, so we're going to seal them with epoxy or be good. So I'm just going to close up the holes using masking tape like this, um, just so that the, the razor doesn't seep through onto our cabinetry or not. Once all the holes were taped up, Ricky got started on closing them with epoxy. So I've taken out all the fittings that were on the deck, all the deck fittings. Everything's out, I just removed that one. I'm gonna sand it. There's all the holes that we plugged. That's actually not the diameter of the hole, we tapered everything down. So drill the hole in the middle first, and then taper the whole top, so it's kind of like a cone going into a narrow slot. We're going to do that for all the other ones. Take off all the deck fittings except for the stanchions. They'll stay. And Ricky went shopping for some Vescanite. Ricky hopped onto SolidWorks to start designing our new swim platform, which will be made out of Nidacore sheets. Stay tuned till next week where we lay up our Nidacore panel and Ricky makes a new insert for our bracket that holds the bottom of our rudder. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't already and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up because it helps us out a lot. Thanks to our awesome new patron, Emma Piet. Your support means a lot to us. If you'd like to join our amazing patron family and get behind the scenes footage of what we're up to, a link is provided in the description below.